Hello everybody, welcome back to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be talking about brick format power supplies, better known as DC-DC converter modules. Now, if you've watched some of the videos recently, you know that we've been talking about a flyback converter module, which we have in manufacturing right now. But in the meantime, you might be wondering, hey Zach, instead of a custom flyback converter module, couldn't you just grab something off the shelf like a brick format power supply? Well, it is true. These are available as off the shelf components and they are pretty easy to use from a design perspective. You just throw some through holes on your circuit board and add in that brick format power supply. But is it really that simple? I'm going to run over all of these aspects for understanding and using DC-DC converter modules in this video. Let's jump right in. So if you're looking for a power supply in a modular format, one option is a DC-DC converter module, sometimes better known as a brick power supply. They are called brick because there is a particular format for the case size that's used in these power supplies, and it is referred to as a brick format. So it comes in full brick, half brick, quarter brick, eighth brick. I have here in my hand one example of a quarter brick power supply. Now, if you take four of these and put them together, you would get something that's about the size of my phone, and that would be your full brick power supply. So these off-the-shelf modules can be a bit costly, but they are very convenient. There's nothing you really need to assemble to get a working power supply. You could technically just hook up wires from an incoming DC power supply and you will get regulated DC out. Is it really that simple? Well, first, let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages because the truth is it isn't really that simple, especially when you're using a brick format power supply in a production grade system. Now, it is true that brick format power supplies do have some advantages, and one of the big advantages is that you get a fully functional component right off the shelf. So if we just head over here to Octopart and we just go ahead and search, let's say quarter brick DC-DC converter, we will find several options here available. We have them available from many different vendors. So you can see here we have options from Murata, we have options from Artisan. If I just go to one of these other pages as an example, we have some from Bellfuse and Traco, whole bunch of vendors that produce all of these brick format power supplies. And this is just searching in quarter brick. You could even look in half brick or eighth brick format and so on. One thing you'll notice here is that yes, they are available off the shelf, but if you start looking at some of these market availability options, they may not be so easy to procure in high volume. That's easily explained when you look over here at this column at the price. At the price for one of these modules, just for example, this module from Traco Power, is $129. That might be a little prohibitively expensive when you start going to very high volume. However, if you were just producing a small number of systems at low volume and you wanted a modular solution for power, one of these quarter brick format or whatever brick format DC-DC converter modules would be a pretty good option. You wouldn't need to design it from scratch because designing that from scratch for a low volume run could cost a pretty good amount of money. This is a lower cost option when going that route. Eventually, you scale to such high volume that the cost of these components on a piece-by-piece -piece basis starts to outweigh or really exceed the cost to design a custom module. So at some point, it makes more sense to just design a custom module. The other thing that's nice about these off-the-shelf modules is that they come in a variety of topologies. This particular quarter brick format uh, power supply is in buck boost topology, and it's isolated. So you can get buck, you can get boost, you can get buck boost. They can be isolated or non-isolated. This happens to be an isolated busk boost converter, and it has a really wide input range, regulates to a fixed output. Fixed outputs are available for a variety of different voltages, um, all the way down to 12 volts and all the way up to, for example, 48 volts. So for example, if you're building something for a telecom system, you're gonna need that 48 volts output from your power supply. There's probably a solution out there that you can find off the shelf that will give you exactly that. Now the last advantage I want to bring up on these power supplies is the pinout. And if you look at the pinout on this particular power supply, you'll see 10 pins. 
A 10-pin format is pretty common. That allows some of these modules to be swappable. You could use multiple part numbers for the same power supply, and it gives you some flexibility to have some substitutions, and it de-risks your supply chain just a little bit. Unfortunately, not all modules are like that. Some of these modules only have eight pins. Some of these modules have all 10 pins, but maybe two of them are optional, and it really just varies. Some of them have 15 pins. To really understand some of the advantages and disadvantages, now let's jump into some example parts. And one thing I wanna do by looking at these example parts is it's really gonna let us see some of the disadvantages associated with some of these components. So don't just assume that every module is going to be swappable for every other module, especially when you are targeting a specific number of pins or pin out in your host PCB. Just make sure to check the data sheets for the pin numbering and pin functions to make sure that your ideal part selections are gonna be compatible. So these little modules sound pretty convenient, don't they? What are some of the drawbacks of using these? Well, as it turns out, there is no free lunch when it comes to working with DC-DC converter modules. One of the potential disadvantages of a DC-DC converter module is thermal handling. And of course, that's something that's universal to all power supplies. But take a look at these four holes on the top of this case for this module. This is where you could attach a heat sink. Now, of course, this thing is pretty hefty. It has a lot of thermal mass but this particular module is also a 150 watt module. And even with high efficiency, it's gonna dissipate a decent amount of power as heat. You may need to attach a heat sink here in order to handle that. Now with brick format DC-DC converter modules being available at such high power outputs, what other requirements do we have to use these in a circuit? If you're familiar with power supply design, you will know that you probably need some capacitance somewhere in order to ensure that your input and output power are noise free. Well, that's one of the things you have to consider when selecting a DC-DC converter module. So let's jump into some example parts. We're gonna look at some data sheets and we're gonna really see what additional components we might need in order to use these modules successfully. So let's just jump into some examples here. Now, the first example that I have pulled up here is a 100 watt quarter brick converter from Artisan. Now, if we just scroll through here, you'll be able to see, of course, all the specifications. Eventually, we get down to this page. We can see that this is actually an eight pin DC-DC converter. We could use this in a 10 pin pinout, but of course, we couldn't swap this for a 10 pin module unless we were willing to redesign portions of the PCB. You can also see here the heat sink that they recommend. Here they have two screw holes through the top part of the design, and those screw holes are used to mount a heat sink as shown here in the mechanical drawing. If we just scroll through here, we can see what some of the pin functions are. You can see here that we have our ins and our outs. We have sense lines, so this is sensing the output voltage, and then we have remote on and off, and then we have a trim function here as well. So the remote on and off is always very useful because of course you could have this be as part of a auxiliary power unit. You can turn it on and off remotely. That is pretty typical on most of these DC-DC converters that you're gonna encounter. Now, one thing you'll notice about this example as well as the uh, quarter brick DC-DC converter that I have in hand is that this is encapsulated. Usually when you start looking online, you will find a lot that are encapsulated. But if I just jump back over to here to Octopart, you'll see here that there are quite a few that are actually not encapsulated. So here's another example, same vendor, and actually much higher power output. This is a 600 watt quarter brick DC-DC converter. This one is not encapsulated on the bottom side. It is encapsulated on the top side, and here you have some mounting holes again for a heat sink. This bottom side has a base plate that holds this module steady against the host PCB. And you can see here, it's also an eight pin power regulator. Now I mentioned that these can have a very wide input range. You can see here this input range is from 36 to 75 volts. That is pretty typical. You do see that there are some safety certifications here uh, that this particular part conforms to. Now with 600 watts of continuous power, are there any additional components that are needed? As it turns out with that high power output, you're gonna at least need capacitance on the input and output. But there's something else that you might need, which is EMI filtering. Now, if you just look through this data sheet, we do see a lot of info here, but one thing that we don't see is any guidance on what's gonna be needed for EMI filtering 
as well as the capacitance on the input and output in order to ensure stability. So to illustrate those requirements, let's take a look at the data sheet for this quarter brick. So if I open up this data sheet here, you'll see this is a Murata quarter brick power converter. And if I just start scrolling down, you're gonna see down here near the bottom of the data sheet that we have some recommendations for EMI filtering as well as input and output capacitance. So they've actually given us an entire circuit here. So you can see here we have all of the typical stuff that we would expect on input side of a large DC-DC converter. We've got an MOV, we have some EMI filtering circuits for common mode and differential mode. We also have uh, ESD protection with a TVS diode. And then here you can see that we have our quarter brick converter with capacitance bridging the output and the input side. So that capacitance is used because of course this is an isolated converter and we're ensuring that we have high frequency noise allowed to move back to the primary side when it's present. If we just scroll down, we also see here we have a bunch of part numbers. Take a look at some of these part numbers. You can see here that the capacitance requirements get pretty high, especially when you look at C9 and C10. So where do C9 and C10 sit in this circuit? Well, you can see here C9 and C10 go across the line on the input, as you can see here, and then also across the bus. This C9 and C10 capacitor this is a 270 microfarad, 250 volt capacitor. That's a big capacitor. So just for comparison, I actually have this quarter brick and then I have the capacitor right here next to it. Take a look at how big that capacitor is. That thing is actually most of the size of this module. So you might think that you're actually getting a form factor reduction by using one of these modules, but when you start looking at the input and output capacitance requirements, as well as this capacitance required for stability, you're actually not getting much savings when it comes to form factor. Let's take a look at one more component. I'm gonna go over here and take a look at this SynCon component. Now this component is a 10 pin DC-DC converter, just like our little Murata brick converter here. And if we scroll down here, we're gonna see that we have the same 10 pins in this module. So here we have all those same 10 pins, However, two of those pins are optional in one of these packages. That again goes back to my point, sometimes they are swappable across different part numbers when they have the same pin out, sometimes they're not. If you were to design for the Murata brick, you could probably drop in the Syncon brick if you needed. However, the opposite might not be true. It depends on the options associated with this Syncon converter and whether you designed for those in your host PCB. So far we've discussed the capacitance and we haven't touched enough on the EMI portion of this. So let's just jump back to this Murata data sheet briefly. If I just scroll up here, you can see here that we have a common mode choke right here. Depending on the amount of current that you need to output from this DC-DC converter, that common mode choke could be pretty large. Remember, this has a wide input range, so you could start from a pretty low voltage and you then step that up to the required output. But that means you're gonna require a lot of current on that input. That common mode choke in this EMI filter circuit needs to be able to handle that. If your input current gets very high, that could require you to use a pretty big common mode choke. So that's another instance where you're having to add a component to this that could be a significant fraction of the size of this little brick. So that's just another thing to keep in mind your EMI requirements could fully negate the form factor advantage that you get from going with a small DC-DC converter module like this. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you're ever looking to find a DC-DC converter module just like this, make sure to head over to Octopart. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. Let us know if you ever use quarter brick or half brick DC-DC converters. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.